Derek Wright, healthoptimizers.com, welcomes you with a picture of you doing yoga in a house next to a lake or a sea. Is that where you exist? Ah, that seems that's a great question. Well, first um, admission, it's not it's not a photo of me, but I do live very close to the sea. So uh, two hundred meters in in that direction is the sea, and my yoga studio is twenty meters in this direction. So um, it it could literally be me. And uh, yoga is something I started with during lockdown. In fact, and uh, and became uh, a firm part of uh, of my practice and, and protocols. So, uh, um, yeah, it's it's not it's not as regular as it used to be. But um, during lockdown, every day on the beach, pretty much. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's part of my life now. Okay, okay, we're gonna talk about all that. But first, I always like to to start strong so next i'm going to give you some challenges and i would like you to defend your beliefs all right so some some quotes from your website i believe that physical goods if they can do you good should be accessible to all not just those that live in the us now this quote screams communism to me are you a communist <laughs> i'm 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 not um i think this this comes from particularly in this space and we can get onto this topic of health optimization versus uh biohacking uh, biohacking uh, is a term that uh, some people um love and and use a lot and some people have a real aversion to because they believe it's some kind of uh cheating or some kind of cheat code. Um, what I see is a lot of things in this space are available to those who are living in the US. And, um, you know, of course, a lot of things launch in the US before they do in, in Europe. So um, this is really coming from that. Um, I do foresee that, um, you know, we, we get global access to to, to goods and services and um and not be limited by by borders you know i'm i am in europe and i remember in school people uh, the teachers were teaching us that oh innovations happens in the us and when this thing becomes really good that's when it comes to europe so we only get the good stuff and and they were giving examples like like uh, like telephones and stuff that your telephones, old kind of telephones, <laughs> are uh, suck because you guys invented those and, but ours are the best because the technology had time to consolidate. I see how that can be true, but I hate this. I I what I see here in Europe is that everything is stale and nothing is changing, nothing at all. I lived in Taiwan for a long time and I go back periodically. And whenever I go back, the, the entire thing is completely different, you know, and, and now that's an innovation. And whenever I come back to Europe, like, oh, we are still living in the Middle Ages, you know, <laughs> nothing changed at all. <laughs> uh, I mean, in, in America, of course, uh, you know, innovation is is really promoted i i did a course uh earlier this year at harvard on managing innovation in fact so um learned about it from the americans directly and talking about blockbuster and netflix and you know business model innovation so you know of course america has uh, a large population with which to target in predominantly one language and this helps uh, the speed of innovation and businesses to to grow right and um and makes growing business is more difficult outside of the US. So uh, this is yeah, part of the, the commercial way. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's, it's also interesting because on the one hand, you guys have a lot of freedom lovers who are really trying to push innovation. But on the other hand, you have also huge regulatory captures and, 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 and many companies are killed by regulation. So, 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 so I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if uh, if the US is the perfect 
place to innovate, but you have the people to do that, but you have the politicians to prevent you from doing that. We have the politicians in the EU to prevent us from doing innovation, all right. <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, look at this, I bet, I bet. Ah, there you uh, go. Yes. Oh no, this is so bad. You cannot drink yes. it properly. Yes. This is what it's, we can it's... thank for the European regulators, you know? Yeah. But... New this year, right? Brilliant. Okay, next challenge, since we're talking about innovations. I always believe, it's a quote from you or from the website. I always believe that in an ideal world that ops supplements, crazy gadgets are not needed to improve health. This screams the naturalistic fallacy to me. Are you a modern day Luddite? No, um, but as, uh, you know, I think all of the, the gadgets and, and believe me, I, I, I love my, my gadgets and, um, uh, you know, at university, even reselling gadgets from Japan and Southeast Asia and this sort of thing, but people in this space will often use it as an excuse. I don't have this or I don't have that. And it will stop them from pursuing something um, to do with their health. So the conversation I had yesterday with uh, my new CEO um, was about a book called The Joy of Running. And actually, it's uh, the premise was that actually, if you're going to start running, you don't need to buy all of the gear. You can get a pair of shoes, step outside and start running. You don't need to go on a health retreat. You don't need to pay thousands of dollars. Same with bike or same with, you know, most exercise you can do for free. Now, a lot of people need that extra motivation to do it. I, I have a, a Peloton bike um, upstairs and uh, I just went on a, a trip to London and did some Peloton rides in the studio. Some people, um, find that crazy that I'm going to a place to record um, in a live studio for a bike that's meant to be at home. So they, they say, actually, that's, that's a bit back to front. But my philosophy on this is actually, we don't need it. We don't need it. As long as you can get the motivation from somewhere, you don't need the fancy devices. You don't need the supplements. And actually, you know, a lot of the, the health optimization comes back to the, the basics in terms of exercise, sleep, nutrition, recovery. You see, um, I am a very good example of, of what you just said, because so, so, so I had a company, I left my company around half a year, more than half a year ago. And, you know, I had some money and, uh, and, and the last half a year I spent optimizing all my routines, buying all the gadgets. And right now, uh, I'm at a place where I literally have everything. The, the next things that I could buy is like, uh, that I still don't have is like, like if I would want to put a hyperbaric chamber or, or some kind of really big stuff into my house, like, like, but I, I, I have everything as those are like lower value from that. And, 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 and yet I still couldn't figure out how to, how to, how to get my my body composition into a level where I would be happy to be with and 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 just just two weeks ago I was like okay fuck it like I got I got everything I got everything I don't need anything else like <laughs> why am I not still not making progress effortlessly well and and then I just decided that okay this is this this is it this is it I we are now get on a very restrictive diet and we we'll try to like keep relaxing stuff because no matter how much stuff gadgets you have, you cannot, I, I couldn't, there were no gadgets that could have like fix my overeating habits, you know, mm -hmm. other than, than utilizing a huge amount of motivation and real power to kickstart the, the, the journey. Right. And, and now when this, 
zero cost stuff that I've done, the, the huge willpower stuff resulted in the past two weeks, 14 days, I lost 6.1 kilogram, right? So, well, I mean, like, like, yeah, gadgets are not excuses. I, I, I agree. Yeah, I think it's, you know, and gadgets can work, of course. And I mentioned those kind of four pillars before there are gadgets that can be great for nutrition, right? So some people can wear a CGM and actually by doing that, it's ultimately restricting what they're eating in terms of bad stuff is being more mindful about what they're eating. Um, same with a, a lumen device that you blow into and it says, hey, you're breathing out this and it ultimately gets you to eat. What's that? Slightly lower. It's a, a device that will, um, I don't have it with me, but uh, it, it tracks what's coming out in terms of your breath to understand, are you burning fat or are you burning carbs? Lumen. Yes. L-U-M-E-N. You know, ultimately, it's kind of driving towards a, a more of a, a low carb diet, which is pretty much what, what I'm on. And, you know, it's just being more mindful then about what those things are. So, you know, the gadgets can help. But ultimately, if you've got willpower and you can dial down on the, the nutrition, if you can get exercising most days of the week, if you've got your sleep working and if you've got, you know, good recovery mechanisms, great. But I mean, I have a, a red light panel for um, recovery. I haven't used it for a number of months now. So it's it's not a part of my, my pro protocol right now. But um, yeah. I, I guess, you know, anything that I do purchase now has to fit into one of those to say it's going to help me with my sleep, it's going to help me with exercise, or it's going to help me with uh, recovery or nutrition. You see, it can also tie back to the theory of freedom and how paradoxically restrictions can create more freedom. Are you familiar with that? Mm, absolutely, so yeah. the, the The normal example is that you're on a field um there is nothing there it's just you and 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 a field and it's like you you think you have a lot of freedom right like and and you have a lot of freedom but what happens if we put some walls up there walls on that field well then you can now do a lot more things even though the walls restrict yeah. you yeah. so you introduce some restrictions and now you can you can actually it's it's actually tools for you to do a lot more things. So your freedom have have increased by rules. So that's quite interesting theory. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Dis discipline brings freedom, right? So uh, I mean, and and I think this kind of works with my eighty twenty kind of philosophy in terms of you know for the most part I'm living fairly disciplined. But you know last uh, last night it was. Uh, pretty hot coming back from from london 35 degrees and uh you you make it to the lounge it's like oh yeah there's uh, some nice uh, little chocolate brownie squares okay i have a couple of those and then uh, then a couple more and then you step on the plane and um upgraded to business class and of course they serve you a nice meal right so i'm gonna have a little bit more of that as well so uh, and you know that's no problem um I've got that freedom because most of the time it's pretty well uh, dialed down. I've been always wondering that the the meal that on the plane tastes much better because you're on the plane, or or it's it's actually a good plane, right? A nice, <laughs> nice meal. Yeah, they they present it nicely in the service, right? So, yeah. Okay, so. Anyway, the eighty twenty is the Pareto principle, right? Mm. Um, which which brings us to to some principles that you you put on your website. So let's let's go through that. Let's you you start with goals, and that's very interesting that you start with that because well, for many reasons, right? There is a whole goal setting uh, literature in the world, but. Uh, since we are we are in a rejuvenation Olympics uh, series, I wanna wanna get back to games in, instead of instead of the goal setting literature. So so let me just give you a couple of uh, interesting things. So what is a game? A game consists of rules 
and goals. So you want to overcome unnecessary obstacles for the shake of the struggle in a game to, to get to your, your final goal. And whenever an action of yours gets you closer to your goal, that gives you positive feelings. Whenever you get farther from the goal, that gives you negative feelings like frustration. So, but what I would like to ask you, what, why do you think goals are an important principle, so important that you made it the first one? Yeah, I think um, with risk, I, I'm very goal driven myself as a person. So put that out there. First of all, I think when it comes to health, we all have a different idea as to what health is is and and goal you you mentioned a body composition before you know that can be that can have a different priority in in your mind compared to your blood markers for example because when i started on part of this journey yeah i've also been um in a in stages where actually a body composition has been more important than blood markers or blood markers being more important than the other and it can be that I will compromise on a different part of, let's say, nutrition in order to hit a body composition. But it may mean that those blood markers take a backward step. So this is where I think it's it's super important that you define that goal as to what it looks like you're trying to achieve before you then go into those other pillars, because it may end up with a completely different result. If... um and exercise and recovery obviously play with each other if perhaps you have more limited time and you don't have that time for the the exercise part then of course you don't need as much time for the recovery but you can't be be setting aside a whole lot of time for exercise but without that recovery so this is where they all play in interchange um it's all a, a time dependent game but without understanding your almost your KPIs in terms of what that health goal looks like, then you can uh, end up asking someone for advice and, and getting something uh, very different in, in exchange. You think that I should be going for blood markers at this point and not body composition? This is, this is purely up to you, right? This is your, your personal endeavor. Often one can help with the other longer term. For me, I, I did go for body composition initially. Um, and, um, you know, when I, when I look back, let's say three, four years ago, it wasn't always the healthiest in terms of the way to get that protein bars were, a, a staple in my diet and, and not the ones with lots of, uh, fruit and nuts. They were high fiber as it, as it happens, but, you know, these were used instead of, um, a healthier, nutritious meal and they would fill me up. And they would have me high protein, high fiber, and uh, they were a very easy way of eating on the go to to get me to my body composition targets. But in doing so, I probably compromised some of my blood markers, and so now that's a a bigger focus for me. But it's it's you know it's all personal, and um, body composition is is one of the biggest out there, right? In terms of what uh, defines health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. I, I am doing blood tests, but my current thinking is that I I don't really know what blood markers are bad because of body composition, right? So, so I can only really get to know what my problem is after I achieve a normal body composition, body fat percentage, and then I can see my blood then. Okay, so I'm not overweight and... I still have bad, let's say, I don't know, insulin or cholesterol or whatnot. So that is my, my thinking there. Let's move on to the second, second principle, data. What do you mean by data? Yeah, um, this, this is, again, I guess, uh, something that, that I very much live by in terms of um, gathering the data that I can um, to allow for flexibility in, in what I do. I know some people um, want to set uh, an exercise regime 
um, for themselves and say, actually, I'm doing that every day, regardless. I do like to listen to my body and compare that also with the data that I've gathered, particularly overnight. So in terms of that data that's, um, that, that I've had for a long time now, that will be the Widings body weight scale with body fat percentage. Now the body fat percentage is um, super inaccurate, but this is uh, data I've had since 2015. So I'm pretty much every day. Um, I have Apple Watch and now Whoop as well. Do I need both? Absolutely not. Um, do they read um, any anything close to the same for restorative sleep? Definitely not. But but the HRV numbers, the resting heart rate overnight can be a, a great indication as to how well my body has recovered. And um, I will look to that to say, okay, what is my workout today? How hard am I going? What recovery do I need? Is today a rest day? Um, those sorts of things. So those are the, the, the data sources that I, I guess that are available uh, almost 24-7. Then there are those in terms of the, the blood tests we, we just mentioned, um, the, which I'll do typically three to four times a year. Um, then um, GI tests, um, which are still relatively new to me. Um, DNA test, which of course is a, is a one-off test. So that's great in terms of the, the financial uh, aspects. Um, but all of these combine together to drive then what do, what do the next parts look like? So um, I don't fully understand those that are taking supplements and saying, I need this, I need that, I need this, without first having their baseline in terms of this is what your body is doing. And, you know, this is where, for me, data drives those next actions in terms of what that looks like. Um the other tests, DEXA, typically twice a year, um, because you know the 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 Wythings is uh, is subject to uh, not being so accurate. And why do I say that? Um, the one I've got from twenty fifteen is is just the the four electrodes on the the feet, so it doesn't take in anything into account really for the the top part of your body in terms of your your body weight, uh, your um, body composition there. Um, so yeah, for, for me, those drive the next stories in terms of, uh, what to, what to focus on, um, what to look at from nutrition supplements, uh, sleep, of course you, you want to keep as a, uh, fairly, um, stagnant. So Derek, right. 31 on the rejuvenation Olympics. So. So, 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 so right now there is a bug in the website and you are, you are 31 and 34th at the same time. So. Yes. <laughs> I, I did open it today and I saw, wow, there's uh, something very wrong today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It happened before I reported them and they fixed it and now it happened again. So they didn't fix it well enough. Um, it, it is happening when they put out an update, I, I believe. Anyway, so so average pace of aging is 0 0.8113 and best pace of aging is 0 0.76 years a year. Tell me, tell me some other other data about you. Chronological age, for example. Yeah, the, the chronological age, uh, I only take have only taken from um true diagnostics as well honestly that doesn't go too well my telomere length is uh, is particularly short um so uh this you're looking at um 50 percent more than my current age um so it's one that i look at but i don't pay as close attention to um but uh, so far in those three tests that I've done with True Diagnostics, the, uh, the telomeres have slightly uh, lengthened uh, marginally. I don't know if I can put that down to the, the hyperbaric uh, oxygen that I tried for a month or so, uh, maybe 20 sessions. Um, it's, a, it's a marker that doesn't go down so well for me. 
the um, 0.76 um, best one was uh, from my result from April and my worst was 0.87 which was from the November before so in that six months I saw quite a quite a good uh, progression and uh, the one most recent was uh, somewhere in between 0.81 um, so not sure when the next one will come um, and uh, I joke with some people I, I see it as a I don't take it too seriously um, that maybe I have to get into training for that that next one and um, you know this is where it also comes back to the 80 20 philosophy and um you know in a similar way to ben greenfield let's say who i'm on a similar place to on the on the leaderboard i will sometimes have some alcohol for example so in in london that can be uh you know one or two cocktails that can be uh, a few more even but uh, uh the philosophy there is actually you know it's actually for your emotional health um it can be great as well and um Typically, I try to make this uh, more front loaded in the day, so it's not to disrupt the the sleep so much. So there's, uh, let's say, uh, two, three hours uh, of recovery time before then sleeping, uh, so as not to disrupt uh, sleep from from any alcohol. How old are you? And there's forty five. And then with that, there's uh, actually from Ben Greenfield a lot of the the hacks to, that can help with um, alcohol consumption as well. So Zbiotics, uh, DHM, these sorts of things as well that can uh, really help with that alcohol processing. So yeah, I joke with people with the the true diagnostics as to you know maybe I need to to stop drinking alcohol between uh, now and the next test, but uh, so far that hasn't happened. <laughs> maybe um, the telomere stuff is interesting because. Um, I thought it cannot be messed with. I thought it cannot be increased, the telomere length. Uh, but, but then, yes, there were some stud. There was one study that claimed increases on, uh, on the hyperbaric chamber and 20 session is quite a long, long, uh, quite many sessions. So mm -hmm. that could be, that could be the reason. And, and, uh, and yes, I heard anecdotally that it increased. Other than, I am interested in this because I have, I am 33 and my telomeres are like a 38 year old or something like that. So I, I don't like that. I don't know what that means, but it doesn't, doesn't, it's not something I would like to have. So I saw that, that there was two interviews. One is with Dave Pasco. He, He's using, he's using a couple of things uh, to try to increase his telomeres. And there was another guy who has a different approach, uh, Stephen Shore. And he's trying to put together a cocktail from all kinds of herbs that try to increase his telomeres. So, so I, I will, I will cycle through the, the least cumbersome to the most Cumber zombie should be the hyperbaric chamber. <laughs> Where I am, it's not possible to get. So anyway, yeah. that will be my no, strategy. I, I, I tried it in Amsterdam and uh, you could do a month of unlimited um, for a reasonable cost kind of thing. So, uh, you know, I I think with most of these hacks, I've, I've tried most that uh, are within reach in terms of the, the, the financial capability. Um, so, you know, anything to do with stem cell, you can put into a different, uh, bracket. Um, my conclusion with most of them is, yeah, they do very limited, uh, amount. And, um, in terms of real hacks, let's say that work, I love sauna. I think, you know, especially after exercise to kind of prolong your, uh, your, um, increased heart rate. And uh, I guess the other one that is new for me this year is cooling for sleep, sleep mattress. So uh, 18 degrees Celsius to have uh, on, on the bed. And this will typically reduce my resting heart rate by around about five. So it can be even, even average of 39, 40 overnight uh, as a resting heart rate. That's pretty good. So, so... So one thing I just noticed that the resting heart rate that people say is different from the resting heart rate that 
what aura ring is showing you. So the aura ring, it, it tells you your resting heart rate, but that is actually the lowest resting heart rate it has measured throughout the night. And it okay. also tells you in some minor stuff, the average resting heart rate. So yeah. what are you talking about? The lowest resting yeah. heart rate measured or the average measured throughout the, the night? The average throughout the night. So, the average. Uh, it's minimum, even more impressive. Yeah, minimums down to 35 this year. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's like the minimum went to 47 this year. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and yeah. that is actually as I as I read about it, it is still considered to be pretty good. So, yeah. 30 yeah. something is like, wow, you're in, you're mm -hmm. way out of my league for now. I also picked up on a theme here, so. You just finished traveling. You talked about drinking in London and going to Amsterdam. So are you traveling a lot or what's your situation? I, yeah, I do travel quite a lot. Um, so there was a, a trip to Arizona earlier this year as well. And um, it is something again, that's uh, perhaps in, in conflict to um, the, the competition aspect, right? So um, jet lag is, is, a uh, is really difficult to manage when it comes to, to sleep. I, I do use a great app in this space called, uh, time shifter, no uh, affiliation at all, but I, I do know the people there. Um, and this can just help those three, four days before three, four days after you manage any, uh, caffeine intake, which for me is, is a minimum anyway, and just manage a transition between those two time zones. They know which flights uh, are, are, are good for um, jet lag and bad for jet lag, those sorts of things as well. So uh, this this can help. And uh, of course, in the in the perfect world, um, you know, uh, for for um, biohacking, for longevity, as you as Brian Johnson will do, he will have his routine, and it's the same every day, and it's he's in the same place every day. Um, my life is is not like that. I will uh, move around, and it does mean that uh, there's uh, it has to be flexibility in the protocol as well. So um, I do see some conflict when I look at it as to hey, it's a competition versus um, the wish to travel and the and the need sometimes to travel as well. There is a huge conflict. I was on the road for an entire decade. You know, like. The, the reason why I stopped working out regularly was this, and then I had to figure out the only workout schedule I've ever, I have succeeded to the past five years, I succeeded to keep myself on a workout schedule and never miss a single session, right? Three times a week. And the only reason was because I introduced some rules for myself. I never leave the base. So wherever I am, I can go down to, if the hotel has a gym, that's okay. But if I have to, or, or there is a park uh, next to the hotel, but if I have to walk for five to 10 minutes somewhere, now that's not good because that makes it that much less likely to, okay. for you to go. So I yeah. rather work out in a hotel room, right? Some primal movements or something, but 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 uh, but not not never leave the base for workout. Yeah, and I always have a have a workout schedule that I can do with no equipment. So when I I don't have access to any equipment around me, then I can always fall back on that to that. So, so that's uh, that's that's what made made me finally be able to regularly work out. Yeah, it's uh, it. Otherwise, yeah, it takes a lot of planning, and uh, the trip to London was in fact built around uh, some workouts. So uh, on the Saturday, it was a fairly high intensity, one hour forty minutes, and uh, eleven hundred calories um, burnt in that, and then uh, two thirty minute peloton rides the next day as well. So uh, today's rest day. Well, why do you travel that much for for work? Uh, what what do you do? 
So this this was really built around uh, pleasure with my girlfriend, and uh, we decided, hey, we we wanted to um, go and see some people um, for a the, the workout was from uh, Salt Escapes, uh, a retreat that she had recently been on, um, a workout uh, retreat, and um, so pure pleasure. Uh, go to London, have some nice food, some good workouts, and uh, and enjoy. Work is uh, largely remote at the moment, and uh, has has have not needed to do so much uh, so far this year, which has allowed a dial down on on this. But uh, from um, September first, um, I will be in a sustainability uh, startup, uh, driving sales across Europe. So. Um, HVAC air conditioning space, as well as a few other activities. So I um, I do have a, a startup as well called uh, Bono Sleep um, that has uh, tools for sleep um, for sale. Tell me about uh, that. I wanted to ask you about Bono as well. Yeah. I couldn't figure yeah. out what that does. I, I didn't spend <laughs> too much time on it, but it's, it's, it looked uh, it's, different. Yeah, so it's still fairly new for me. Um, and in in full transparency, uh, it's it's a company that that I bought. Um, so it's a space, um, obviously that I'm passionate about in terms of helping people to improve sleep. The um, the, the the company is called Bono Wellness, and the um, main device is called Bono Sleep, and this is using um, electrotherapy stimulation uh, from your hand. Um, giving small shocks to help calm your your nervous system. Um, it works for for most people. Um, the the science is not a hundred percent robust. Wait, let's wait say. before that, before that. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a device. It's a small device that you put in your hand. And right. and when do you do that? During sleep? So, before sleep? So after as, sleep? As you as you get to sleep. So um, it will set for, for 20 minutes, just give a uh, slight, uh, small current to your hand. And similarly, if you wake up in the night, and honestly, I do sometimes suffer from that 3.30 type of uh, uh, wake up, and I will grab it and uh, it will help me to, to just get back to sleep. Which hand? Doesn't matter, both hands, one Left after hand another? Is the is the is the advice, um, closer to the heart being the, the logic there. How long? Uh, so uh, it will automatically go off off after 20 minutes, but you will, and typically within that time, you're already asleep. And what do you feel? There's, there's no jolt to say, oh, yeah, it's it's gone off. And actually, your body gets very much used to it, so you will not typically be able to tell that it's actually even gone off. What do you feel? It's, it's almost like a, a pins and needles type of effect. So uh, just a slight numbness. Um, in in your hand arm and um it's 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 pretty calming and it, it works pretty well okay so going with the science yeah so i think the 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 science is that you know in a similar way to to how devices like a, a pulsetto will uh, stimulate the the vagus nerve and uh produce a calming effect that this is this electromagnetic magnetic uh, stimulation um, in some studies has shown to, to help with that calming of anxiety and, uh, and ultimately then helping with, uh, sleep as well. You know, what, what we do as a company, of course, we offer the 90 day money back guarantee because some people just, it, it doesn't work for them or they find, uh, it falls out of their hand or, um, you know, they have something that just can't be solved with this device. And that's why also in the, the broader um, company, we do offer supplements. We will offer more. We, we offer the uh, the sleep uh, cooling mattress that I just described before as well. Um, but ultimately, we want to offer a range of different tools that can help with uh, with people getting to st- sleep and, and staying asleep because we see it as just the um, you know, one of the most important parts of, of this whole journey and, and health uh, and preventing uh, illness and disease. My understanding is that these vagus nerve stimulators um, are one of the very few things those can actually increase your HRV or decrease your resting heart rate. So my question to you that, have you ever done like a rigorous um, rigorous testing on yourself because you have quite a low 
resting heart rate. Uh, okay, so, so multiple questions. What's your yeah. HRV? Uh, and, no. and have you ever done a rigorous test on yourself? Like, does this actually lower it? So, rig- rigorous testing, no. And uh, I think part of the part of the trouble as well is because the the, the wearable I have or the, are, are on the wrist as well. And so this isn't then, it does slightly mess with the measurement of the HRV. Um, so we have had customers um, report in their reviews and, and stuff in the daytime to show their HRV improvement. That's That's been great, um, but, but nothing rigorous to date. My HRV sits around uh, 60, 70 typically and um is is fairly consistent and um yet to find the the silver bullet in terms of what um really uh, increases that on a on a longer term basis and i've and i've tried my device i've tried um pulsetto as well so. and and did that not work by the way at all at the vegas vegas nerve stimulation for you the the pulsetto Feels great, but it hasn't consistently increased my HRV. So you have this startup, Bono, and and uh, and you are working for an air conditioner company to drive sales, mm-hmm. R- right? Right. Okay. So this to yeah. So it's a yeah. It's a a, a smart um, so AI machine learning uh, smart rotary valve that that is going to turn on off mediate the air conditioning in in buildings be those large and and small as well so it's it's helping make all of that um hvac and air conditioning smart within a building okay so so what what does it have to do other than trying to keep a consistent uh, yeah what what does smart mean in this context yeah so so then it's a really about the energy efficiency and and the the waste so in many buildings, there will be air conditioning running when there are zero people within that space. Overall, it's uh, relating to the sustainability goal, which is a huge part of what I stand for as well. Okay. All right. You also mentioned your, <laughs> we did not go through with your principles yet, but uh, we'll, we'll get back to that. Who are the people you're surrounding yourself with? Yeah. So, um before I come on to my girlfriend, I can probably mention, in fact, the, the way we, we met, which is maybe an indication. So my, um, my best friend is, uh, my person or was my personal trainer. And, uh, she was the one that introduced, uh, the two of us also based in Amsterdam. So, and these are you know the sorts of people that I, I like to, to hang out with fun people and, uh, those that, um, do believe in health and well-being, but um, but also not necessarily a hundred percent sticklers to that. And then again, that that eighty twenty type of rule. My girlfriend is American and based in in Amsterdam, and uh, she's very much into this uh, space as well. So um, we will compare our metrics daily um, in terms of what I just talked about in terms of HRV, HR, body temperature respiratory rate. Uh, I'm missing one of the metrics there as well. Blood oxygen. Uh, yeah. Mm. That, that one I uh, don't pay, pay too close attention to. Um, apart from it being on a plane, then it sends, to, sends it down into the 80s typically. Um, so uh, she lives in, in Amsterdam and I'm at, at the beach in, in Norweg. And so on days like today, um, we'll, uh, we'll compare notes as to um, using the app Athletic, typically that would take from the Apple Watch and so there's probably uh, nine or so screenshots of uh, of data in terms of to understand uh, how we've slept and, and how we've uh, both recovered and we compare notes on that. Um, and of course, her being into um, the same space, it makes it easy in terms of uh, what we are choosing to eat and drink and uh, um, when we're going to sleep and, and all of these sorts of things. And when we uh, work out and we work out together and... Um, not too much in terms of the competitive aspect with with her, but um, certainly in terms of teaming up to to make sure that we we stay healthier and, and we improve and learn in this space. So uh, yeah, makes it fun. All right. Regarding the principles, three is sleep, four 
is exercise, five is nutrition, six is supplements. I will want to go through all of these, but later. For now, let's go to number seven, science backed. So that's an interesting one. And I would like to you where you're coming from, because what I noticed in this space, when people talk about science, they mean a very, very narrow part of science, which is the English empiricism scientific method that you will have to have this very uh, rigorous process to get to the truth and test reality in every single way or form. And you cannot make on any other assumptions or conclusions or anything about reality. Now, <clears throat> of course, there are other ways of, of getting to know reality, not just the, the empiricists way. But of course, the big philosophical debate was the rationalists versus empiricists where the rationalists were, instead of trying to learn the word from empiricism, from, from testing, they were trying to find the base truths and put them together and build systems out of them. Uh, think of like Euclid's uh, geometrics, right? There are a couple of axioms and an entire world of science. Scientific mathematics is built out of the couple of base truths. So, 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 so there is a debate. And if in nutrition, for example, you are trying to make these longer conclusions, well, let's just say that's not very, that's not very typical or, or liked upon for, from, from other nutritionists. Um, there is another, other way of getting to know the world, which is more cultic that you fuck around and you find out <laughs> you just mess around a lot and you will kind of have an idea of how things are working of course none of them are solid knowledge but but you can get a lot more knowledge into you just trying a lot of things like a kid so what do you mean by science backed yeah yeah, I think I think it, it is absolutely both ends of the spectrum, right? So on on one end, you've got the randomized control trials, um, which take a long time, which cost a lot of money, which can still be flawed, right? Because, you know, or they can still be heavily biased because they are funded by um, someone who's decided these are the results that we want. So uh, this is what we're going to do. Or there, there are those that even... Um, the researchers themselves are perhaps vegan, so decide um, for certain markers to only measure certain results to say, hey, look how all of these things improved and forget to measure waist circumference, for example, um, even though that was measured the first time around. So, um, you know, those, those are great, but also, uh, you know, sometimes need to be taken with that grain of salt. And then at the other end of the spectrum is, is very much the N of one, right? So the, the experiment with yourself. And um, that's where, you know, I think there, even in the, the Whoop app, in the Athletic app, there are those things that you tag for sleep, for recovery. This is what happened this day. And it'll start to already show you, well, this is what, you know, this is how your body has responded to alcohol, to a strain of 10 plus uh, on the day before. And I think, you know, these are important because we are all individuals, right? And this is where actually the more I'm learning about the DNA uh, genome part, that can even play a firm part in, you know, I wish with some of those randomized control studies that that was, was put into the contention of who those groups were as well as to, to understand, okay, this is what happens when a saturated fat diet was used but if we didn't know um, the status of certain genes maybe it doesn't matter so much and i think you know this is where i'd love to see faster data uh, smaller data sets more experiments um, especially with supplements because i think you know supplements are, are you know is, is a wide space where i'm sure that there are some that that do great things um, 
but there's just so much noise out there in terms of influencers just saying, hey, yeah, get this because they're getting paid 15% and they get, get, get you to take a 10% off as well. Um, and this isn't, you know, good from a commercial model perspective uh, for the for the consumers. So um, I think there's a huge middle ground there that uh, I'd love to see um, companies uh, spring up to to you know get better science um, that's more affordable, that's less biased into the consumers' uh, heads. Half hex. This is an interesting principle. This is your eighth principle. I find it interesting because it seems a bit of an outlier to me compared to all the other things like health hacks. It's like a, a jolly joker. This is the creativity principle of yours. T tell me about how, how, why did you include this? Yeah, um, so, so this would be um, something like the, the sauna that I mentioned before. So don't do just sauna on its own but combine it with following exercise. So you've done your, your resistance training, your cardio workout, maybe both, then um, have a sauna session of 10, 20 minutes, essentially to um, prolong your, your workout almost and to keep your heart rate 100, 140. You're almost uh, adding a bit of zone two uh, onto your workout in that respect and uh, before... Um, then you know getting on with your day so this is this sort of um thing that i mean um i was uh reluctant when writing this to write biohacks um of course it sits separate from supplements it sits separate from uh nutrition um the other one that would fit firmly in this would be the uh the cooling mattress uh concept as well so that just manipulate your your body in some way uh, to help with this and and this is where personally i'm going to keep trying out these things um to see what works and i don't mind uh, spending my money or wasting my money um to see uh you know what works and um where it does uh, then um broadcast to people to say hey yeah this is this is something that works for me then you know my girlfriend will also be trying it probably pretty much at the same time and we can say hey we've got two people here are there perhaps 10 people that uh, can see this work for them as well? So Yeah. Dave Pasco just told me, he just told me his mattress stack. So he has five different mattresses on top of each other. That's where he's sleeping. One is electromagnetic stimulation, PAMF, um, cooling, like all wow. kinds of stuff. And it's like, I don't know if they work, but you know, it's, it's no big it doesn't give him any extra work so why not or maybe yeah. it is good things or not uh the cost is small so your last principle is emotional health i heard that real men have no feelings True. <laughs> <laughs> there we go we don't need to discuss no i i think it's it's perhaps for me personally one of my one of the areas where I struggle to give it as much time as as I need to, uh, maybe to um, go full circle. It is where I use yoga, in fact, as the meditation time. So um, typically that's been ashtanga. So you'll do a an opening chant and a, a closing chant. And when I first started doing this, it's like, what, what the hell? What kind of craziness is this that I'm um, chanting out loud? But actually, from a, a mindset perspective, if you're trying to, if you're listening to someone, a call and response, if you're listening to someone who is chanting something in a language that's not known to you, that you then have to repeat back, it's very difficult for your mind to to go off and be thinking about, you know, what you're going to eat for dinner or can we just get on with the exercise? So it does allow for that um, meditation uh, time. I've not been one to, to use the, the meditation apps at all yet. Um, and, and again, you know, this is one end of the spectrum in terms of emotional health and, you know, the other one, you know, very much that I mentioned before is friends and family and connection that that firms that is a, a firm part of that as well 
and you know it it is the last on the list but you know without this part your your mindset needs to be in the right place and you need to have the right focus to do any of these and uh, you know you mentioned your your body composition zones and that was driven by your mindset right it wasn't driven by uh, any of the uh, the expensive gadgets and things to to help with this and uh, that needs to be in the right place and uh, have the right uh, peace of mind to to drive to those goals where is your mind are you spiritual or are you religious or where is your mind yeah uh, i'm i'm not religious i have limited uh, spiritual um belief no superstitions uh, these sorts of things um yeah i think as as per the principles i believe in in science i believe in data i believe in friends family connection and uh and enjoying myself growing learning and with that making uh mistakes as well so uh and you know that's all all part of the the journey and um yeah the the rules that i live by have it been always like this yeah yeah um how how did you grow up you grew up in a in a non religious setting absolutely yeah yeah so um my my parents uh didn't didn't have any uh, spiritual following my i have a a 10 year old daughter and she has has chosen to um be catholic and is going through that that uh process of uh, being confirmed etc and uh, you know i believe everyone is entitled to that their own belief and um those are very different in this world and uh for me uh, yeah it's not a strong part of um, my life where have you grown up in england so i was born in new zealand and um this um remains a big part of, of me and i went to the olympics recently and was able to see new zealand pick up a, a gold medal there in person um but i grew up in england and so also great to watch team gb there and uh that's a big part of my life and now um 13 years in the netherlands so uh, that's team 3 okay i have a question to you it's a bit of an outlier but i've seen that you are you know i just i i just tell you what i assume and then you tell me how i'm wrong so i seen that you are hosting airbnb wellness experience for people good find Yeah so in in the space uh, here in in Nordweg it's a uh, it's a tourist destination so mm-hmm. many uh, Germans are, are driving here it's one of the closer coasts for them um we have a, an amazing beach here um so that's that's a great place for me to get my my steps in on a regular basis and um so downstairs in my house i have an airbnb that has a a sauna a jacuzzi um experimented with the ice bath uh, part but so far this is still i think a small niche that is uh, interested in in this space so uh i'm uh, you know like with uh, the rest of the the businesses and uh, ideas i'm i'm experimenting in, in in this area and um of course for those who are interested in uh, in wellness i'm happy to help uh, on that that journey uh, and uh, to host people here are you coaching your people or it's just hey i have all this stuff and you can try no it? so it's it's really on an advisory basis and or, or just um free advice um and uh and yeah the the facilities are here if you uh so please mhm mm-hmm. all right now let's move on to to what you do Um firstly could you describe an idea day in the life of Derek Wright Okay Yeah so um try to wake up around 7 o'clock and um morning there will be um 500 milliliters of of water normally filtered water and um breakfast is pretty much is is pretty similar most days some slight variations but will be based on a, a yogurt bowl and that will be either greek yogurt so zero fat typically 10% protein or skier so interchange the two 
and um, in that goes a whole concoction of items. So predominantly whey protein, um, sometimes interchanged with a, a pea protein just to, to mix things up a little bit. And then typically uh, seeds, fruits, powders type of uh, concoction that is made um, every day still because I still like to have that, that variation or the ability to say, yes, this is going in today or, or no, it's not. Um, so those will be creatine, typically, uh, five to seven grams. Glycine, uh, typically three to five grams. Chia seeds, flax seeds, um, probably five grams in total of those two. Cinnamon, two grams. Fenugreek, two grams. T yeah. Tell me about fenugreek because I asked ChatGPT <laughs> and ChatGPT said that uh, for pregnant, no, for women who just had their new mothers, this is the supplement that helps the most to, to make more milk. But, you know, since I'm getting fenugreek for my woman, then I'm going to take it for myself because why not? So, <laughs> so tell me about that. Yeah, heart health, cholesterol. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one. Um, so some of the platforms I've historically used um, for the blood markers, like Inside Tracker, um, this one's very, uh, you know, recommends fenugreek. I've now kind of moved on to um, self-decode, which then combines the DNA and the blood markers and a, a bigger range of blood markers. Um, both of them are in the, the recommendation uh, space in that. And um, yeah, so it's it's a little unusual, honestly, in a breakfast bowl because um, its flavor, uh, you know, with curcuma is... Uh, which also goes in the bowl is a little more curry like, but uh, thankfully the uh, some of the other flavors um, do mask those flavors a bit. So, um, what else do we have in there? Wild blueberries, typically, um, cocoa powder, so cocoa via or um, the one from Brian Johnson uh, in terms of the the blue package print, blueprint. Um, so the high cocoa flavanol flavanols value um, and uh, low heavy metals as well. So, um, and then yeah, can can be some um, Brazil nuts uh, for selenium. So typically three of those. That's that's pretty much it. Can be some more seasonal fruit um, or wild fruit, depending on, um, but mostly organic. The whey protein is typically uh, grass fed as well. Now that that one can be, you know, it, it's not religious to the point of it has to be grass fed. Um, it's one of those where, sure, grass fed meat is is something I have a strong preference for. But as it's gone down in the in the food chain, almost or the production of the whey is probably less important. You know, things like the omega six, omega three index are really you know less important because the fat content is so low in the in the whey that's uh, coming through. That's pretty much. Um, breakfast bowl, B bowl, and um, workout will typically be um, fairly soon after that. Whether resistance training, um, running class of some type, on my Peloton bike, yeah, somewhere between twenty minutes and and an hour. Then there's usually some work done, of course, and um, lunch is also. Fairly consistent, um, will nearly always involve some eggs. Free range, sometimes with, um, in the supermarkets here, they have uh, extra omega-3 content, even eggs, some protein bread, spinach, kimchi, uh, chili flakes. Um, yeah, some, uh, typically this is where, again, there'll be um, more vegetables, wild caught smoked salmon so you know between these two meals i'm i'm making sure that protein levels are probably 40 grams each meal at least and the the diversity of plants um pretty high already so 
uh, you know, you've probably heard it many times before the, the 30 plants, uh, 30 different plants per week is uh, very much a, a goal that I, I strive to hit um, and, and exceed. So those two um, fairly regularly similar and, you know, that the, the eggs part can be um, also at a brunch place uh, out and, and not from uh, my own home. Um, I guess the, the biggest risk when it comes to that aspect and then the, the dinner um, being out as well as the type of oil that's being used, I'll almost exclusively use um, extra virgin olive oil and uh, and you know try and keep that on a, a low heat uh, so as not to hit any smoke points at all as well can be really anything in terms of the afternoon and, and what that looks like, uh, whether that's uh, time with my daughter or girlfriend or travel or some more work or at the moment at the beach. And uh, dinner is certainly the where the most variation comes in. Um, but again, um, 40, 50 grams of, uh, of protein coming in. Uh, I guess chicken is probably the the biggest one. Again, uh, free range chicken breast typically, um, and then a, a range of uh, of vegetables typically. Not typically as carby as a, as a sweet potato, but um, broccoli, cauliflower can even be in in the Netherlands. They're great at packaging up these. Uh, um, all different varieties of, uh, of vegetables into into one bag that's that's fresh and uh, that can be cooked up nice and nice and easily. Yeah, that's that's it. And, you know, I'm not averse to there being some some snacks or something uh, in the day. Uh, dates are one of my favourites at the moment to to snack on as well. Protein shakes sometimes as well. The protein bars have completely disappeared from the from the diet. And yeah, bedtime is, is usually 10, 10.30, keeping that as regular as possible. It's challenging when, when there's travel involved or any, any social engagements. But um, you know, I think as we're seeing more and more, it's one of the most important parts of sleep hygiene now is to keep uh, that regular uh, bedtime and, and hopefully therefore wake up time as well. It's a, it's a solid, solid diet. What about your sleep? Uh, what do you make sure to to have a good sleep? How important is it for you? Yeah, I mean it's yeah hugely important, and um, it's um, I guess probably been only three years or so. I guess that I've really been uh, tracking my sleep. Um, I had the the Withings uh, watch before even my Apple Watch, and and so this was. Uh, the mechanism to do that and i guess the very first thing was just noticing as, as most people do as to wow how much uh, alcohol does destroy that so that was i guess the the first uh, somewhat restriction um what i noticed with with sleep yeah we're just trying to get that wind down time an hour before um, i'm not a big stickler for removing the the phone aspect um so it doesn't seem to make a huge difference to to me but i think you know this is what people seem to be seeing now saying now it's not so much about the the blue light it's more about the content that's watched on the the device so if you're scrolling instagram and you're getting too amped up um or having the dopamine hit this is the problem as opposed to necessarily the screen with the, the light coming from it um what i notice and I've certainly heard Brian Johnson say this as well, is that when my heart rate is around 45, 46 um, prior to falling asleep, this almost guarantees a good night's sleep. So being in that rested state, uh, not too hot, then this uh, this puts me in the right position for a great sleep. That's interesting. I I have not heard that before, but I can see practical applications of, of that. You mentioned some alcohol and and a lot of traveling. Um, do you have any bad hobby, habits that can mess with, with all that you're trying to achieve here? Yeah, I, I guess it's, I wouldn't call it a, a bad habit. I would just say, yeah, it's um, socializing, really. So uh, friends... Uh, the, the friend who I mentioned before, my personal trainer, it was her um, her birthday last week. So 
we go out, we have a five course meal. I choose the, the wine pairing as well and then have a, a few beers afterwards. So yeah, then uh, bed is at 1am and that HRV score is not too, uh, too, too good the next day. Um, but I, I wouldn't call it a bad habit. I don't um, regret it in any way. Um, I do regret not having the, the hacks with me to, to take before and after because they can uh, make a huge difference, particularly the, the DHM. Um, but, uh, no, I think, um, it's, it's a balance and that's where it comes, comes to the 80, 20. And, uh, I think there's so much emphasis being put on, um, longevity and health span. Uh, you know, we need to still make sure that we're enjoying our lives whilst we're extending our healthy lives as well. Right. So we can't just, uh, you know, live. Um, by the rules of hey, we need to do this in order to live longer. If if life is suddenly um, so regimented and and becoming boring, so so I can see an argument for you to do that. So bear with me. If the idea is that right now we are going to live like monks until we achieve um, a level of technology that enables us to smoke and drink and cocaine and hookers and everything every single night and day. But maybe every 10 years we go to the clinic and we get back another 10 years of our lives, right? <laughs> Even though we are destroying ourselves. So th that will be much, much further out than just regular longevity escape velocity. Maybe, maybe let's coin this term. Let's let's say something like destroy yourself, escape velocity. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that that is a concept that's out there, and we should okay. eventually reach that somehow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think certainly with with my girlfriend, this was uh, you know initially some of the the motivation. Almost uh, we we didn't do all of those every night, but. Uh, um, you know, certainly from, um, you know, trying to, um, mitigate the harm of, of some of the alcohol or, or bad eating, right. Or, uh, Hey, you know, um, when I was in London, you know, part joke, I, I had this, uh, huge, uh, donut, uh, before one of my Peloton rides uh, as my so-called, uh, pre-workout. Was it healthy? Absolutely not. But I was about to, you know, burn off uh, at least this amount of energy and and more and um it's yeah it, it's a balance and you know that that uh 10 year um no escape uh, velocity um mechanism is is also a a balance right um so um it's uh yeah it'll be interesting to see uh how how, how that uh evolves you know just uh just one note that I personally come to dislike the word balance. And the reason is because I, I realized it's more like juggling than a balance. Balancing is that you're balancing something, mm -hmm. but juggling is that, oh, you're always focusing on the mm -hmm. thing that is the worst right now. So, so I, I, I felt like, like many times when people are, Talking about balance, the juggling metaphor is much more appropriate and takes us much further. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, um, I, I, I like it. We, we don't need to re-record the whole uh, podcast, but uh, you know, every time I've mentioned balance historically, I, I'll now think of myself as standing on one foot whilst juggling, and then it's about the balance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you move yoga and what? Um, in terms of overall exercise, you mean? Yes. Yeah. So um, yoga has certainly had less of a focus in the last uh, year, I would say. Um, it's still there. And as much as anything, it's from a mindset perspective. I know um, if I find myself uh, getting a little bit 
too irritated that it's uh, it's time to go to the yoga studio just uh, downstairs here. Resistance training has um, certainly been the biggest part of of my um, exercise regime and, and protocol. So typically three to four times a week, and yeah. Then typically different types, but cardio a couple of times a week as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But again, it's it's a space where um, I keep it flexible, varied, different places, different gyms. In the Netherlands here, we have uh, something called Class Pass that allows us to just use some credits for for different gyms, different um, experiences, different classes. I I do love going to. Um, group classes as well and uh yeah learning something new and, and changing those exercises i think it's it's important that we're keeping things very varied and in the summer that that also means um hey if you've got the opportunity to do two hours of kayaking in in finland um after the biohacking summit then uh, you know that that'll be my exercise for the day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, quick confirmation. My impression was that you only take a handful of supplements, right? Yeah, it's uh, a lot more. <laughs> it's a lot more. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Then, because you... then the, my question changes. So then, my question yeah. is: How many pills do you take a day? Um, now the the travel stack is somewhat smaller and this can can give the opportunity for some level of uh, of cycling um and you know my nirvana that I'm I don't think I'm too far away from right now is to get to a almost zero supplement stack so maybe that's limited to let's say some form of omega-3, um, which I typically take, I say some form of because I, I normally take a krill oil that's a phospholipid uh, form that's better for my gene type than the, the standard omega-3. And this is where I, you know, I mentioned before in terms of the, the data driving some of those decisions. Rhonda Patrick has done all sorts of stuff there. So that's, that's where um, people can, can find out you know, a lot more about that, that choice. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to get to that stage of, okay, my um, blood markers are in a great spot and that, that supplement stack is, is vastly reduced. Um, so I guess the next question is uh, which supplements? Well, maybe the main ones that you think ones. are important. A vitamin D during the winter, typically. So at the moment, I don't pair that with any vitamin K, which uh, of course can help. I I really don't believe in any uh, any multivitamin kind of things. Really, I, I think you know the ability to to choose between them is uh, is necessary. Anything with folic acid in, I have a strong um, feeling that you should people should be throwing away because this is something that a lot of us from our DNA can actually not process properly, and it's just going to end up uh, floating around in the blood. I do take uh, Tonkat Ali in terms of. Uh, testosterone um a small amount of uh, dhea also so um i've borrowed that let's say from dave pasco's back so having having taken a look at that what did i take with me the moment green tea so not a uh, non-caffeinated version creatine i mentioned almost the most important ones are going in as as powders into that breakfast bowl that also help with uh, not having to think so much about it because then it's part of the breakfast bowl uh, making process. Other important ones, yeah, I think it's it's always when I look to what am I taking with me on travel. Yeah, the, the trip to London was uh, very, very limited in terms of what I was taking with me. Anything special in your house that's like invisibly improving your stats across the space? Let's see. Let's see. I just want to run through my, I feel I didn't go through all of my supplements before. Let's see. Oh. Uh, glycine I mentioned before. NAC is occasional. Berberine actually is, is one that um, I'm taking very regularly now. Uh, so dihydroberberine in particular um, is just a bit softer on the stomach as well. And supposedly five times stronger than the, the standard berberine in terms of uh, some of the effects there. 
um, and that's uh, from a GI perspective. Magnesium again. I've experimented with with most of most things: taurine, uh, urethane A. I try most of them. See if there's uh, some kind of uh, effect in terms of the the data, the blood markers. Typically, not so much. The magic in my house, well, um, the Airbnb steals away my sauna most of the time, so especially over the summer. But over the winter, that um, that has uh, gets a lot of usage and typically means that I would do uh, the cardio resistance training here and then uh, jump in that straight after. Um, steam bath is something that I have here as well. And... You know, one of the the really important things um, that we haven't you know talked so much about is the is light upstairs in my house. I have a, a huge amount of natural light coming into the the space, and so that that already is my my morning light, so to speak. And you know, getting that even throughout the winter is um, is of course hugely important. I've I've worked for a, the world's largest lighting company for more than ten years, and so I know the value of. Uh, of lighting and uh, circadian rhythm and um, the biological clock and how important that is. So I think you know that's uh, in combination with the the um, the Peloton bike. I'm uh, I'm ready uh, if we were ever to have a, a lockdown again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's <up> not <laughs> something extra that you do that other people don't tend to do. Yeah, I think, and, and you know, the, the, I, I have some level of bias here now as well. But you know, I'd love people to give as much focus to sleep as as I have learned to do. That doesn't need to be with with any tools, but to to have a, a sleep routine. I haven't needed one, but for some, that can mean the spray of a, a scent, a lavender that you would take with you when you go on the road, for example. Um, it can mean even you know taking a, a, a silk pillowcase um, with you when you travel. A sleep mask for me is you know every, every is worn every day. Can't rely on the the fact that there's you know some some light coming in. So having good sleep hygiene and this is where there's you know some of the studies on the the website as well in terms of if sleep can hinder your weight loss goals even so. Uh, for me, it's the focus to sleep is something that should not be underestimated in terms of compared to the nutrition and, and all these other things. And um, a lot of my day is is almost, you know, factoring in how do I optimize for sleep? And that means, okay, workouts typically in the evening will be avoided um, and uh, focused on the, on the morning because I know that that, that will uh, that will help me sleep better. All right. Well, let's talk about the Rejuvenation Olympics. So how come you started participating on it? Yeah, I think my interest in, in data and my competitive nature. <laughs> um, I, I you know want to see how I compare um, versus the, the best in the world. And then also how I compare with myself. Right. So um, the first test um, with my result of 0.87, I was on holiday um, in New York City with my daughter and uh, got my um, True Age, a True Diagnostics kit sent there. It's much easier sending things uh, in the US than getting things here and paying all the tax, etc. So before we went for, out for our day of sightseeing, I was uh, putting the, the blood uh, tasso on my arm to, to draw the blood. And um, so there wasn't a great deal of preparation put into that or any kind of uh, making sure that I sleep well, etc. before this. And then I had a, a baseline score. And, um, you know, at some point then I knew, OK, I wanted to see how that was going to improve. And... Um, when I saw that they finally updated the um, the leaderboard, then uh, I already had uh, one kit uh, in my house ready to do. So made sure that I got that third result in uh, pretty quickly. And my average actually didn't change at all because my average before with the two results was 0.81 and my third result was 0.81. So, um, you know, there was absolutely no preparation, uh, you know, before I, I did this one. Typically, 
like to make sure that my resting heart rate is low and my HRV is high on that day. So I think you've referenced him before, um, Michael from Conquer Aging or Die Trying. You know, his, his data approach to this is, uh, you know, is, is incredible. And I know how he loves to, to show HRV and uh, HR. And so I think on the last time I did it, my HRV was double my resting heart rate that, that morning. So I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's plug this in. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, I don't take it too seriously. Of course, um, it's, uh, it's fun to see this score. I know, um, you know, the, the Simlands and the, the Brian Johnsons of this world, you know, they need to take it quite seriously because this is a part of, of what they do. And, um, and to show that, uh, you know, their, their protocol works and, um, that, uh, for Sim, you know, of course he has, uh, people to coach and, um, so, you know, I think it's, it's great. It, it makes it fun. It makes it something that's, that's talked about. None of the other aging clocks, of course, are, are really talked about. And, um, Brian Johnson is the, is the master marketeer really in terms of, uh, making this, uh, let's say famous. Yeah. It's, uh. It's fun and um, it's great that I'm on the leaderboard and uh, I'll uh, order a new test at some point to um, to get that result down again because the, the, the last one was the, the highest number. So I'm on the right track. Well, watch your back. I'm coming for you. Do you know anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anyone on the leaderboard? Uh, Tony Pemberton is uh, based in the UK. So that's who I've ordered the kits from so far. Um, from Epic Genetics, but he's um, he's um, lower than than where I am, and you know the others I will know only through, uh, through forty two Tony in, Pemberton, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So the others I will know pretty much as as you did before in terms of uh, watching their content, right? In terms of uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Epic Genetics. Uh, yeah. So so that's your managing clinic. So then. What it means is that Tony Pemberson is the Epic Genetics uh, person, right? Yeah. And aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. So, um, yeah, knowledge of the other people. Yeah, I, I know that. I don't think Joe Cohen is is on there. Um, we've we've uh, spoken a few times and met in Helsinki. He's a he's a a, a character in this uh, biohacking space, of course, as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Biohacker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can't find him right now. Yeah, I think he's he's had a point six one or six two or something like that. So. Oh yeah, yeah, that's 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 good. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's look for some value. We find value where it is not obvious, where there is no consensus on. What what is the thing that you strongly believe to be the case, but very few people agrees with you on yeah um i don't know whether it's very few people i think there are a couple of topics out there that um maybe it's more of a, a 50 50 type of split but fasting for example i struggle to believe that there is magic in a certain number of fasting hours um and you know that the autophagy begins after the 16 or 18 it's all based on rodent data and those rodents are nocturnal even and i find it very difficult to believe that then that's then proven in in humans and i think you know this is where the the science is being misused to then say okay and now autophagy kicks in just like that so i'm of the mindset that Fasting is an awesome tool for calorie restriction, calorie reduction for for those that you know want to restrict their calories down to a certain amount, and it can mean that there is then no need to count those calories. And you know, I maybe count calories one one day or two days a year, let's say. So I'm of the mindset that uh, yeah, it's it, that's that's what that is for. Maybe in a similar way, I'm I'm not too sure about CGMs for health improvement. Uh, CGMs, of course, can be great for diabetics. You know, to, there's you know reducing those spikes, 
and I think it's it's without doubt it's unhealthy to be co consistently spiking blood blood sugar. And I've I've tried one for for two weeks myself. I don't know if I need to do it again to improve my health in any way. Even if it was free of charge, I don't know if I would wear one because I believe that it's meant to be spiked once in a while and the body has its processes to deal with that. And so I don't believe you need to, to keep this blood glucose as a consistent flat line all of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, regarding my, my, my latest diet, so I don't personally believe in fasting because I don't want to lose muscle, right? Like I want to lose weight, but I don't want to lose muscle. And it just never seemed right to me to not eat protein uh, at all. But uh, lately, uh, regarding my latest diet, I actually started with a one day fasting because I realized that you know, it's, I'm probably not going to lose any muscle because if I do a fast at a point where I'm like f so full and uncomfortable with all kinds of food already, like a, a total complete water fast is not going to, is going to make me better off than, than, than actually eating anything. So, so I started out with a full day fast and and I think it even gave me like a psychological edge that, well, mm -hmm. in the next days, I'm only eating protein and vegetables, but it's not as bad as the fasting was. So Yeah. Yeah. No, I like it. I like it. It's, uh, it put you in that right mindset of, hey, you can do it. You've done that already. What's uh, four hours or six hours or, or 12 or 16 now? It's, uh, it's easy. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, ultimately, I think it's where people sometimes get caught up into the counting in terms of, well, you know, hey, it's it's this day, but ultimately, you know, the body doesn't work like that, right? It's It's kind of more of that almost, hey, well, what does that longer term perspective look like? Yes, our day is built up with 24 hour cycles, but that doesn't mean that the calorie intake has to be, you know, completely aligned with that. It's more of the, what was the average calorie intake over the week or over the month that's going to make the difference. And that's already where the fasting for one day is going to make a difference as well as your mindset uh, improvement as well. Okay. So next I ask, ask this question from everyone. I always change it up because to keep it interesting, but I think it's, it's a super important question. And, I want to explain why uh, it's important. My question will be, why should people give you money? And the reason is th this, this question always <clears throat> hits people like, why should people give me money? Like, what do you mean? It's stupid. Like, but if you think about it, people shouldn't give you money. If your answer is people shouldn't give me money. Your answer should be that only if you already have enough money to not need any more money right now. But if you're not in that position to be like reasonably super rich and you don't know the answer, why should people give you money? Then you should think about that question because that's a very important thing to survive in this world. So Derek right? why should people give you money? to help people achieve their goals when it comes to health, wellness, sustainability. So sustainability in terms of the, the role that I'm about to start is a, is a firm part of, of my belief, largely around the, the built environment and how energy can be saved, how um, people can be happier within that space, how space can be saved. And then that also ties into um, where we are spending 90% of our time as humans to become healthier in those spaces as well. You know, this is where it comes back to the health optimization. How do we do that with the, the tools that we've got in the time that we've got? Right. 
Thank you very much for coming. That was a blast. Thank you so much. Great to be on the show.